The, the, the All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Relationship, Love, and Religion, and I am your host, Hub City Dre, and I have a nice, well put together panel here for tonight's discussions, man. I got my boy, a longtime friend, man, DJ Count, man, yeah. comedy DJ of all the comedy spots in comedy the Los Angeles area. Spots, uh, everywhere, bro. Everywhere. So, everywhere. and I'm expecting you to bring some of that energy into the. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. As we should. Yes, as sir. we should. And I also have book author and family therapist, Miss Mabel Elise. Oh, I didn't want to screw that up. Miss Mabel Elise, how are you today? I'm doing great. I'm glad you can make it. Thank you for having me. And the book that you wrote, um, the Divorce author of in the Church. Divorce Ooh. in the Church. That's going to be uh, very key in some of the topics that we're going to talk about tonight. Then over there to my far left, man, I got my guy, man, Mr. CEO of New Black Wall Street, Mr. Aleem Hagan. What's going on with you, my brother? Glad you can make it, man. And don't be getting shy with that microphone, man. I know you're not a shy dude. Don't be bagging away from the microphone, bro. Miss Kendra Spencer, Minister Kendra Spencer, man, longtime friend of mine. I was around when we first started the Hub Radio. That is correct. I'm glad you can make it back. And we're host of the Relationship Council. Watch out now. Be clear. Be clear. Be clear, man. And my homeboy, man, uh, manager of Pack Music, uh, graphic designer, and this do- this dude does a little bit of everything. Jack of all trades. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. So listen, man. We want to break the ice a little bit, man. This this topic that we're about to get into is. Our love topic. (laughs) This is finding love after divorce. That's the topic that we're going to get into. Um, So I I got some people up here that has either been married, been in long-term relationships, currently is married. Um, So yeah, I think this is a good topic for for all of us to actually speak on. But let's break the ice a little bit. What do you guys feel about, let's say, online dating? Miss Mabel. Well... Uh, speaking from a personal point of view, I've never dated anyone online. I never? think I never. The Facebook account, though, too, Miss Mabel. I joined Facebook, I'm going to be honest, just because of the book. <laughs> and that was only a few months ago. I'm a very private person, okay. so, and um, I'm a little old fashioned. I know I'm, I'll be 50 in about three and a half months, but I, I was raised pretty much old fashioned wow. in the church, old school. And I've always been kind of that type of girl, believe it or not. So I've never personally experienced dating anyone online. I mean, you know, maybe that's just not for me, for some other people. But personally, I've never done it. I don't have a desire to meet anyone online, even at this point in my life. You, you didn't scroll through, like, your, your timeline and just see happen, just happen to see a nice-looking fellow. It's like Never. Hey. No? <laughs> I have no desire. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Anybody else been with a chime in on this? Well, I this whole online dating, we had the party line. Now that was different. That's, that's online dating. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was growing up, we right, I, I did. I went. Yeah, we uh, we did the the party line. But uh, for online dating, um, no, I I have several friends um, that are are heavily into dating online and nothing has come about it you know as far as them meeting women they go on dates and i get the horror stories and and plus i watch way too much tv you know law and order svu i mean they just i mean if you keep it 100 i mean they not already put it out there for you to stay off the online because you gonna get catfish nobody's listening Mm -hmm. okay okay i can understand it I can dig it. j yeah, Like she said, the catfish game is for real. <laughs> like, for real, for real. I've been catfished before. It's a lot of these young ladies know how to manipulate these pictures with Photoshop and apps and filters and et cetera, you know. So, but overall, I, I support the online dating scene. If it worked for you, you know, if that's your thing. Funny story, I actually met my first girlfriend on MySpace. But it was an online dating thing. It was just MySpace. You know what I mean? We just, you know. That's online dating. That's online dating. That was like my first legitimate girlfriend from MySpace, though. Uh, okay, Cal? Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm from a whole different uh, perspective of the whole thing. All this online anything, it's 
society has made everything that we've been taught not to do, okay. Talking to strangers and all that stuff without meeting them, don't do it. Now you got the Uber, they're making it okay for you to hop in strangers' car. <laughs> <laughs> and now they got the Postmates, but now you got a complete stranger bringing you your food. Okay. So all that, all that stuff right there that we were taught never to let anyone do, I, I'm not with none of that. And, and I think the online game is just a tool for people with no people skills, no personality, no no uh, conversation to, to be themselves, to be somebody else, to be somebody else online. I have okay, to agree I'm with from, that. I'm from Everybody, old, I'm though? From the old school where you kind of got to do something really crazy right. and stupid, like <laughs> walk up to them and say hi. And then she'll know if she want to deal with you within the first 60 seconds, then we don't. Some people have a uh, relationship for years, and then they meet each other, and it's hard. So I, I, I'm from an old school. I, just, I like to meet. Because if you, if you know, your eyes is a certain way, or you're looking at me crazy, I'm gone. No, I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, none of that. None of that. I'm straight. I'm, Sound I'm like the room is kind of divided here, man. I little. disagree with that because I have excellent social skills. You know what I mean? I mean, I know everybody in LA, but I'm still all for the online dating. I'm looking at it as you just gotta get it for whatever the benefit is. Like some people are very busy. Like me personally, I got to points where I was like super, super busy. And I feel like I wasn't opening up my network at all to people outside of business. So I've made profiles and came across like great people. You know what I mean? And also with social media, you can always check the Instagram. You can see the friends you got in common. You can FaceTime. You know what I'm saying? So it's ways to get around the weirdos. So I have a question for you. In your line of business, were there any women around? Are you just with all men and in your business? It's, you it's, never ran across women? It's majority women. Okay. But in my well, in, in, so my, busy. in my line in my so in my precious. line of business, uh-huh. I usually put them in the business category. Okay. And I usually don't I date it. inside of my business circles. It. Usually. <laughs> Usually. Okay. Usually. Everybody online it's not is fine. Cool. So no one online is, is business on your Instagram and all that stuff? No, they are too. Okay. But so I'm just saying with, with social media, like I can just hop out the box and be all personal. Usually like my the, the gift and the curve of a bis- being a businessman and women are like most people is most of the people I talk to, I start talking about business. And it's usually a business relationship. And then it's hard to swing it to a personal relationship. Yeah. But the benefit to me online is I can go personal off off top because we're both here to meet people to date so at that point when i was on the sites like it made it very easy may i ask how old are you i'm 31 i I find i personally find that a lot of the millennials Mm -hmm. i have a 19 year old daughter and i have some friends they're more open-minded and they're raised differently and so they're more game for you know meeting greeting online like i said i just open up a facebook instagram all that social media stuff so i know i'm it's, de- it's definitely for the younger generation. Yeah, for exactly, sure. and I for get sure, that. Sure. I get that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. That is, it's, it seems you, to be a little divide. Dre, I'm gonna tell you how it started. It all started with AOL Messenger. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it started. I'm gonna have to disagree with you because you know, Kendra me. said, you know, the 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 party line. I think it went back. Oh no yeah, no no. Yeah, See, yeah, I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't with the party line. I, I hated the party line because it was like if you got a cool voice, you automatically sexy. And that wasn't it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that, I mean, that's the same way. That's the same way with online dating right. because you're looking at the profile, and then you, you, if you guys are going to communicate on the phone, you hear the sexy voice, and you try to put that voice with the picture that they put up when that's not who they are. Right. So, I mean, it, it's still the, it's still the same. It's still, unless you want a video chat. Right. Yeah, but every time the, it's time to video chat, the internet go out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's, you it's you sound like, uh, like you've saying. seen some catfish victims, one, oh. one or two. Oh, yeah, I do. I have, I have a friend. He's on these online dating sites. And as he stated, um, uh, he would, um, he wouldn't, he doesn't talk. He, he's not a talker. You, you can't call him. He'll text you. So he hides behind that. He hides behind the, the the dating app. So when he goes on these dates, he got one date and that's it. So I have to tell him, look, we you have to communicate outside of this. So you need to start right. going up to people and start conversations, right. Right. even if it's just you know just on GP, just have a conversation. That's the but, social awkwardness, right? So you but you hiding behind the social or the. The online dating as oh this is who I am but it's not. Yeah, it should definitely be a tool, not everything, because right. you definitely still got to work on your regular life skills with people. You know. Agree, agree. Well, let's get into the topic, y'all. Finding love after the divorce. So, 
ladies and gentlemen, like I, um, I've, I've come across a lot of people that either has been married before and said they'll never get married again, or they've been married before and they said that they can't find anybody to uh, to marry. I haven't personally been in a situation like that myself, so I'm I'm gonna toss it out to the uh, the board here, man. What do you guys think about finding love after the divorce? First off, how many have, have been divorced? Anybody in here been divorced? Yeah. Okay, we got two. two. Okay, and then you guys been married, or you guys are married, currently, currently, currently. married. Okay, yeah. and then Aleem? Single. single, single. Ever been engaged? Yeah. Okay, long term relationships. Okay. Okay. So then we can have some. Yeah, we 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 can have some some conversation then. So, so if not after divorce, after the breakup. But what what do you guys think about finding love after long term commitment? Uh, it's possible. It's to to find love after divorce, or love could find you, and you find yourself falling in love. Do you um, do you tend to look at love differently because of maybe where you've been? Because when we say after a divorce, and we're talking about after, you know you've been through some things, so. I believe that um, an individual, it depends on, you know, kind of what type of divorce situation. Some divorces are traumatic for some individuals. Um, now, I'm not going to be biased, but I am a woman, and I found that uh, most women that are divorced, they find it hard to kind of get life back on track again. And then it's a little bit different for most men because the average man has about 14 other women that he can very choose from very quickly. So he finds his life, you know, he kind of just pick up his coat and he get to moving again. And it's a, it seems to be a faster process for him to kind of heal and move on. While for a lot of women, uh, it's a slower process sometimes. And um, they kind of, they're, they're usually um, the caretaker of the kids or they have, you know, uh, custody of the children, so you have to keep that type of thing in mind and who you're going to be dating and letting around your children. So you can find love, but uh, caution. <laughs> well, I did, uh, take your time. Well, I think um, it's definitely possible. The one thing that I tell um, women that are in long term or ended long term relationship and even marriage. Before you jump into anything else, because you've given so much of yourself in a relationship, to find out who you are before you get into the next relationship. And not willing to take what you had in that previous relationship to your new relationship. Because once you do that, you are setting yourself up for failure. You are going to be a person that uh, cannot cope in a relationship. And you will blame love for not being able to move forward and move past it so for me of course I definitely believe that and my husband and I we've had this talk about um, just divorce like if, if it happened he asked me would you get married again yes I like sex and oh, I want to make sure that I'm with one person. Is that your so, motivation for this? It's, it's part Marriage? of my motivation. What are you trying to say? You know, and I mean, I, I do. And I mean, he looked at me and I asked. I said, "Well, you not?" He said, "No, I'm gonna be single." I said, "Well, do you?" But I, I, I like, I like being a, or in a relationship. So of course, I would take time to make sure that I'm okay. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find that love and I'm gonna have more sex. Oh. I support I, that. <laughs> so uh oh yeah so i was gonna say uh, i think it's uh, a couple things that needs to happen after divorce for for you to find love the first thing is you gotta have like a, a real detox period because when you with somebody and marry like it's a lot of things that still stick with you as far as how you treat that person your thoughts your love that you still might have for that person you really got to detox and really not date at all a lot of people leave from marriage and they go for a rebound and i think that's the worst thing you can do because you still got all of this old stuff tied in with this old previous relationship for one two three four five ten years you know what i mean right. also you got to figure out how did you become a better relationship partner from the previous marriage because usually i'm, I'm just gonna put like it on, take a little maturity i'm just gonna put it on both parties like it might have been your fault it might have been their fault it might have been both of y'all fault but whatever the situation is you got to get better from the divorce you got to like to me personally i feel like i'm gonna be the best mate because of my divorce because i will never get another divorce i'm gonna make sure the next situation is magical right a fantasy 
You know what I'm saying? Like, of course, that was my idea for the first one. But after going through a marriage and a divorce, you learn a lot more through the process. So it is possible if you use it as a learning experience and you have a proper detox period, I believe. And how long were you married? About a year and a half. Okay. How long were you with her before you got married? About five years. Okay. Uh, Kendra, how long are, have you been married? 14 years. Been married for 14 years. I've been married for so 14 years. How long have you guys We've been? We've been together 18. Okay. okay. Where, what's, what's up with you? Where are you at, uh, Liam? I haven't heard much from you on this. You know, I think that uh, the challenge of it is is the concept of marriage itself. Okay. When it sounds romantic for someone to be young and in love, but I don't think we take into consideration the growth and the development of an individual's consciousness their natural talent, skills, and gifts. It's improbable, I'm 45 now, for me to be at 45 to have the same level of consciousness at 25 years old. So the whole institution of marriage does not lend to the thought of growth and the development of an individual. And so when we talk about marriage, are two people committed to growing and developing and researching? Or are they committed to the sense of love being something that is void to a force or a power of growth and development? Because what is marriage? Is it a piece of paper or is it unity consciousness of the mind and the heart for two people to make a serious commitment to grow together? Because if there's not a commitment to grow together, then each individual person, whether it's conscious or unconscious, is going to create a certain space that's separate from when they were together originally and everything was lovey-dovey in the beginning because we're growing. Right, right. right. So in that particular context, I think that the institution of marriage as we have it today is a European construct that doesn't take into consideration the deeper dimensions of consciousness and growth and the development. So it's very limited. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, my man used a whole thesaurus on that one. He used the whole thing. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm going to be a little in layman's term here. I'm right. going to bring it down in three notches. <laughs> No, uh, as far as as far as uh, um, the divorce, love after divorce, it is a it is a, a slippery slope because first of all, it, it depends on how the relationship was and how it ended. So you know, I'm saying for me, I must just put myself. I got my story. If I was to get divorced, I, it would take a while for me to get back into the and, and back into it because you know I don't have. 14 different girls waiting in the wings but but you know but you know but you know we're supposed to be committed to this marriage but once you get out it is a, a level of a, a time for detox because you don't want to be you know you want that that simmer period because you don't want to bring that anger into the next situation mm -hmm. but I, I do uh, truly think it is a room for love after uh, after marriage and the, and the divorce is as long as you give it time to close the door and just, just, and just take your time and then move on. Because some people move on, that's a rebound, like my man said. That's a rebound. Or somebody just trying to show you that I can do it, I'm over you, and then the other person gets hurt. You don't want that. So like I said, it is, love after marriage is very, after divorce is very, very possible. As long as you, like I say, you take your conscience to it, a higher level and you just take your time and just, and just move on cautiously without hurting anyone in, in the, on the journey. That's all. So. Mabel, how old were you when you got married? I was 28. 28. Did you feel at 28 that you were ready to get married? Yes. I had already gone to, you know, I educated myself with a bachelor's degree. I bought my house at 24 by myself. I had done all the things on the checklist that we think, like he said, the European, you know, you've done this. And all that was missing was the, the great guy. And I was, I was a school teacher at the time. I have to buy the book. And, you know, I'm still doing my thing. Actually, I was working two jobs, teaching school and working for the airlines, just doing my thing. And that was the missing component, I thought, was this guy. And, um, hey, so did, I, I, so did I met him as a, he was a student. He was one of my favorite students' parents. And he met me. And uh, I was like, hey, hey, yes, this is great. You know, good. You know, and I thought it was wonderful. And it's still, uh, yeah. And how long were you guys married? About 16 months. Oh, no, I was about to say, it sounded like you didn't have room. It sounded like it was no room for a husband in that, that whole thing. No, it wasn't. Was it? You made it work? Oh, yeah, because then I, I didn't really have to work at all. Okay. I got married. I had a choice. I just kept the airline job, which I'm still okay. there 30 years later. Okay. <laughs> didn't he have to work? Now, look, looking at your younger self now, so if you go back to your 28-year-old self, would you say 
you were ready for, to be married? You know, there were some things that I, I ignored that I didn't pay attention to. The flags, per se, that we know there's something there, and we kind of just like, well, you know, okay. You know, I don't know if guys do that, but girls tend to do that, and we figure nobody's perfect, and the little flag signs, and we just kind of brush over, and I would say if I had to do it all over again, surely I would have waited uh, to it, at least, you know, to get to know him, I would say, much better. I didn't know him. Is there a, Jane, well, you've been divorced before, is there an age that you would say, you know, <laughs> don't get married until you're this particular age, or is it like... A level of maturity or what is it it's not a certain age but I would say wait no matter what age you are at even if you guys are 35 and it's just it's, it's really no rush for the actual union because you can still build your marriage without a marriage you know what I mean like you don't necessarily have to have that ceremony rushed you got to let it marinate you know what I mean but if you're younger or older I would just say wait I say I would think like as soon as you guys start talking about marriage just wait a little bit longer. <laughs> What's a little bit longer though? Because uh, your little bit longer might be different from true. my little bit. Longer. I mean, just just don't just don't be so eager for the ceremony. So how start long do living, you think? It's not a time. Just start living the marriage. Forty. If you guys feel like you should be married. Start living the marriage and see how that goes. Right. Until, so you say living the marriage. I'm saying like. Shack up, shack up. Me, per me personally, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, people, people, people might not believe in that format, but yeah. I believe, I believe you, you guys should live together. As you should. Could I, yeah, could I say something, Drew? Right. Come on in. Yeah, say it. Could I say something, Drew? Yeah. So, um, how about we switch from the concern about <clears throat> marriage and a piece of paper to identify your personal passion? What makes you happy? Okay. How about right. if I could identify with a woman what her passion is? And she can identify with my passion. We both can support each other. Then that is a deeper marriage. Yeah, because there's absolutely. nothing more profound than individual happiness. And if that person is happy and I support them, right. then we have a marriage of the minds. And then we can grow in whatever level that we choose to. But seeking to say, well, maturation hits at 28, 35, it may or may not. Right. But if two people, because marriage or love is unity consciousness. And so when we have that mindset and we both are in tune with our passions, see the whole thing about American society, everything is given to you. So education is downloaded to you. There's no individual thinking in that. So it creates a thought in the mind that, okay, well, I'm educated now, so I can put down the book. And then I can just continue to pursue my life. But the education of the love and the heart, it never stops. Every relationship is a textbook for us to grow. And so there's some people say, well, I've been with my mate since I was in the second grade. Well, that's cute. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. But you know what? Have you grown? Right. Or are you, do you hold you on to that person together. for fear of being by yourself? Right. You, you're just holding on because you're fearful, right? But at the same time, uh, the authenticity of love is to create a space for that person to be an individual and love them as an individual, not trying to stifle their growth and their development. That's authentic love because love just becomes a vacant word. It should be a force to create environment for us to support each other, not try to restrict each other. Right? I like that. I, I, don't, feel, I don't feel bad for all the relationships I've been in then. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> I got a whole lot of chapters in the book. I, yes. I, love, I love his perspective because you do have the marriage that's signing a paper. And like he said, you also have a marriage of the mind and spirit. And that's a different type of program because the cer like some people get so uh, occupied with the ceremony and they think that's marriage and it's not. That's just a show. You know what I mean? Like in your marriage, your actual ceremony should be your ceremony. I think everybody's going by the standard. I guess it's the European standard of what uh, actual marriage ceremony is supposed to be. And I think that's where people mess up from day one. Because right. a lot of people's just like, oh, I just want to look good. I just want all my family to see that I'm doing good. I want the world to see that I got a man or a woman. And that's going in the wrong direction on day one. You know what I mean? So well, people, well, tend I, to, I, people tend to, especially uh, a lot of women, as any, a wedding planner, one of the things that I do discuss with um, the couple is when you have, when you, why are you doing this? Why do you want... Um, I'm not an orthodox wedding planner because I am married because 
the thing that I see most of the time when what ends in divorce after a year or two is the wedding debt. The wedding debt. They can't get out of that debt because they were too busy trying to put on the show for, as he said, like everybody for everybody else. So when I go in, my my stipulations of being your wedding planner is I need to know why you're doing it this way. And what do you have beyond this? Counseling if and you wedding planner. Right. Well, it, it becomes for free, you know. But I want to know why it is that it this is what you want. And also, as he stated, uh, the age thing, um, there it, to me, there is no age. I got married at 20, um, 23. I got married got married Jeez. at 23 and one thing that I had always stated wait to have sex huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I had already you know, I was, was already <laughs> there <laughs> but I, I couldn't um, I didn't want to get married seeing the relationships and the marriage in my family how they dissolved and things like that I wasn't ever going to get married but there was a different plan for me there was a different path for me and now if I look back at my 23-year-old self and say, was I ready to get married? Of course not. Of course not. My thing was I I wasn't ready. I had put my book down. So I learned my husband, but when I thought I knew everything, I put my book down. But in recent years, as I've grown and matured, as we both have, we went back to school, to each other's college. So he's at my college, I'm at his. Yes. So we know each other. So when he when I make a face, he doesn't have to say, well, what are you saying? What you, he knows because he, he got the book on chapter five, her looks. And this is what this looks like. And, and vice versa. When he's ready, when he's um, watching the game, I know what to do. I don't have to, babe, just give me some attention. No, because I've matured and I've grown and I'm reading his chapters. Okay. So I believe it is a matter of going to school. Whether you got a degree at whatever university, when you get married, you're still in school. And you're still at a university. I'm in an Ivy League now. I'm <laughs> about to get my doctorate. <laughs> no, no, okay, so look, real quick, I, I got to ask you guys a couple questions. Um, as it relates to finding love after divorce, um, how soon do you start to date publicly What'd after you your divorce? How soon do you start to date publicly after your are they divorce? Kids, are there kids involved? Um, okay, let's let, give me both. Let's say okay. that there is no kids involved. Immediately. Immediately. Six months. Six months. Six months. <laughs> you ain't got no, that's it. Six months. You got to run back in it. So, okay, man. If you get, wait, wait, wait. Why only six months, though? Six it's months, good. you good. That's good. You just stop. That's, that's good. That's good. Stop moving on. We're moving on. She's done. <laughs> She's done. She's done. Okay, so, no, she's done. Wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. We're talking about no kids. No kids. She's done. You're done. You're yesterday. You're finished. See, that's what I was talking about. A man seemed to move on a little bit faster. Same thing with women too. Women too. They right in there too. So, so if you have Some a child, women. if you have children, a little bit, uh, maybe a year, maybe, maybe a year. year, yeah, maybe a oh. year. Get get it six months for them to get over it. Then six months to get used to the next one. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. Six and six. Six months to get over it. Okay. And, and are you gonna be living with her already and stuff like that? that no, not really. After okay, the year, the year I'm she scared. moved in. No, she's just coming. <laughs> she's coming in. She's coming over. She's coming over after six months, and then we moving in after the year. Okay. We good. It's a plan. It's a plan. <laughs> Mabel, what do you think? Uh, again? I was raised old fashioned. My parents were married for about fifty three years. To death did them part. Regardless of whatever, they raised four great daughters. We were a family, and that's what I remember. So. That kind of has a bit, going back to that other question, too, of what my view or what I thought that a marriage should be. So I didn't, I wasn't into, you know, living with nobody. And then a year, six months after, my daughter will say, I never, she can say, I never, you know, had different men running in and out of our home. She doesn't remember anyone except for her father, and my son's father. And on that note, I say, buy the book, Divorce in the Church. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so really quick, man. Um, what do you guys think? So, so is there finding love after divorce? Yes, yes. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Across the board, everybody's. Good. You can find love. Love find you. Yes. But, I mean, you got to take your time and really. I say here from God, from the Christian yes. standpoint of view, yes. you will end up in the same situation. You can grow, you can learn, you can live with them, you can go to all the schools that you think you know them, and that still is no guarantee 
that that marriage is going to survive because if you don't have God in there, and even when you have God in there, then I say buy the book. And on that note, we are going to take a break, man. We, um, we're going to take a break. We'll come right back with more relationship, love, and religion. We'll be right back. Yes, yeah. sir. All right, first break. That was good, guys. Great work, great work. That was good. That was all good.